It's important to note that practicing civil disobedience in one area doesn't mean practicing civil disobedience in every area. And so it's only at a particular point that civil disobedience would need to be practiced. How do we decide when civil disobedience is necessary? Well, let me give you three categories. One, when the government forbids what God commands. For example, forbidding the preaching of his word. Can't comply with that. Two, when the government commands what God forbids. For example, commanding worship of a golden image. Can't comply with that. And three, when the government commands what isn't theirs to command. Critical. For example, the terms of worship. For a local church, can't comply with that. Not their jurisdiction. So we cannot comply with that. Three categories that call for civil disobedience. But all of that, of course, is geared toward our response to the government. And we want to home in on the God-ordained role of government. And so we're going to do that in the next part of verse 1, where the reason for being subject to the governing authorities is given. Look at it, next part of verse 1. For there is no authority except from God, and those which exist are established by God. So the reason we're to be subject to the governing authorities is because all authority is from God. That means all authority originates with God, which means all authority is delegated authority. And that means the governing authorities are accountable to who? To God. In other words, the governing authorities have a stewardship from God for which they will be judged. They are not autonomous. They are not sovereign. They are servants of God, verse 5. Deacons of God. And servants are always accountable to their masters. So what must they do to faithfully discharge their duty? They must govern by the standard by which they will be judged. Which is what? The word of God. They're going to be judged by the word of God. They're accountable to God. And therefore, they must govern in accord with the word of God.